Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope that you're doing well. Everybody knows about Dior Sauvage. Everybody knows about Blue de Chanel. Everybody knows about 1 million. Today, we're gonna to be talking about fragrances from really big, well-known fragrance houses that are lesser known, but still really good. So even though these don't have the clout or the name recognition of an Aqua de Jove, for example, they're still really solid and you should know about them. So let's jump into it and check out these under the radar fragrances. Let's kick things off with the fragrance from the house of Dior. The fragrance is Higher. It is named after the song Higher by the band Creed. Can you take me higher? No, actually, that's not accurate. It's not named after that song, because if it were, it'd be terrible. I'm just playing random fan of Creed. Not, not the fragrance house, the band. This has pear, basil, cypress, rosemary, and musk as some of the notes in the fragrance. When you first smell it, it's very green. It's fresh. That pear really helps kick things off, and it has this kind of sophisticated edge to it. Now, this one did get a flanker, higher energy, so it wasn't just a one and done like Dior Dune. That one for men uh, basically just stands alone. And frankly, I could have featured that one, but I feel like higher would work really well for a lot of people in spring and summertime, early fall as well. It's completely overlooked. I'm a big fan of fragrances that do have that kind of green feel to it, you know, green around the edges. So I really like it. But if you don't enjoy fragrances that have that green touch, maybe that wouldn't be for you. But as long as you do, you should know about that one. Now we're going to go to Gucci. Now this one is one that I've talked about off and on on the channel for years. I still love it. I think it's great. It's Gucci by Gucci for a really like the bottle too. It's really classy. Same bottle style as Gucci Intense Oud. Only this is more affordable than that. And some places that you look for this fragrance, it will be called Gucci by Gucci by Gucci. Just, yeah, we got it. Just really want to hammer this home. I need you to know who made this. Me, Gucci. And that's because the fragrance is called Gucci by Gucci. And then a lot of stores will put the fragrance and then they'll put like by whoever. So it'd be like Aqua de Joe by Giorgio Armani, for example. Since this is called Gucci by Gucci, it ends up being Gucci by Gucci by Gucci. This has tobacco, cypress, violet, patchouli, and leather are some of the notes in the fragrance. And really it's that tobacco cypress combination in here that absolutely crushes it. So it's this slightly sweetened tobacco note, this tobacco leaf that's really, really, really approachable. It doesn't ever start to creep into uh, a territory where it could be potentially divisive. The cypress again gives it kind of a, a green feeling around the edges, a bit of woodiness as well. And it's nicely sweetened, just like a sprinkling of, of honey, just a really light drizzle. The performance here is not amazing. That's the big drawback, but it's got a lot of versatility. It's office safe. It's uh, another fragrance that does have a little bit of an air of, of uh, sophistication to it, if you want to call it that. And it's more of a neutral weather scent, you know, spring and fall. Love, love, love that one I have for a long time. Now let's go to Prada. Nowadays, Prada is pretty much Luna Rosa or Loam. That's pretty much it. This one, though, is absolutely worth checking out, potentially picking up, and it kind of punches out of its weight class. It's, it's nicely unique, you could say. It's Prada Amber Intense. To an extent, to an extent, this flanker of Prada Amber Pour Homme, you could think of as like Prada Amber Pour Homme if you added in a little dollop of Tom Ford Noir Eau de Parfum. It's got myrrh, patchouli, bergamot, vanilla, and of course, amber, as some of the notes in the fragrance. This one, wonderful in fall and winter time. It has a little bit of a mysterious vibe to it, which you'd expect with that coloration on the bottle and also with that slight resemblance that it has to Tom Ford Noir. Performance on that is pretty good as well, and you can find it at discounters at least semi-regularly. Now, Yves Saint Laurent, and we're going with Loam Parfum Intense. This one's got ambergris, orange blossom, and woods as some of the notes in the fragrance, and it's got this, this really nice kind of sweetness, this, this subtle but lasting sweetness. This one's also got some citrus in the opening, kind of ties it in with the original Loam, and then benzoin in the base, which helps provide that subtle sweetness that as soon as you spray this on, it kind of 
creeps up through the cracks and you smell it right away. Very smooth, easy to wear. It's very versatile and is a big compliment puller too. People love the way this thing smells. It doesn't have great performance. I mean, no, that's, I've already said that before on a fragrance here in the list, but it's worth owning. The reactions that I've gotten wearing that are great. People love it and it's underrated. You know, not many people are rocking that nowadays. And it could be that it's in the loam line as to why it got overlooked because a lot of people seem to not really care too much when flankers come out in the loam line. And it could also be the performance. You know, sometimes people will just automatically write something off if it's not powerful enough. Now let's go to Armani. We're going with this one, O Daromes. How did you like that Italian? Yeah, that's terrible. This has mandarin orange, ginger, vetiver, and sage as some of the notes in the scent. This is more of a grown up, slightly mature scent, though it doesn't come across dated. Definitely comes across more of you know, a business type scent or potentially a formal scent or a casual fragrance if you're the guy that likes to kind of dress up a little bit when you're out on the town or just running errands. What I mean to say is it doesn't come across overly youthful. You know, it doesn't come across really sweet. It's not got any of that bubble gum type essence to it whatsoever. It's more aromatic, fresh and spicy with a wonderful vetiver base. It smells like a million bucks. Unfortunately, almost completely overlooked. Nobody talks about it, but that smells great. If you want to smell like somebody that's got money, wear something like that. It's just, you know, not part of the Aqua de Joe line or the Code line or Emporio Armani wise, the stronger with you line. So people don't really know about it. Now we're to Isi Miyake and I'm going to go with this one. Wood in wood. Woods, apricot, grapefruit and ambroxan. This one does get hated on a bit. I think mainly from people that expect a little more woodiness from this. Instead, they got a little more ambroxan than they were hoping for. But if you're looking for just a really easy to wear casual fragrance, you know, something spring, summer, fall, potentially even winter as well and uh, something that has a really zingy, fresh, fruity opening with a, a slight tweak with the apricot, you should check it out. I think it actually smells really nice, but at the same time, I accept it for what it is. You know, it's not really complex. It is definitely heavy on the modern aroma chemicals, but I think it's pleasant. And for the price that you can pick that up for typically from discounters, I think it's worth it. Just an easy wear, dumb reach kind of fragrance that is probably going to be eventually completely forgotten, but I think that it's worth a wear. Ooh, this next one I like a lot, a lot, a lot, is Tom Ford for men. And you know, I gotta bring this other one up too. Tom Ford Extreme. This stuff, so nice. I love, love, love the bottle, love the fragrance, everything about this, but it's just really hard to find, which is why I'm not officially talking about that one, but I kind of want to show it. If you ever see that for a decent price, pick it up. Now, Tom Ford for men. This one doesn't get talked about ever. Again, performance is not great on this one. And I think one of the issues with this fragrance is that some people aren't blown away enough by it. It's got lemon, amber, ginger, and cedar, along with tobacco, as some of the notes in the scent. And you may think, oh, it's gonna be really tobacco forward. You know, this, this great tobacco leaf with uh, a bit of sweetness and spices swirling around. That's not it, but I think a lot of people thought that would be it, and then they were kind of let down. It ends up being more of a fresh, spicy scent with kind of a, a dry tobacco leaf in there, and bits of ambery warmth as it dries down. It's clean, gentlemanly, easy to wear. Again, kind of like the Armani, it's that type of fragrance you wear uh, casually when you've kind of dressed yourself nicely and you just wanna exude confidence or uh, to business situations, formal situations, even on a date, something like that. You know, it crushes all those situations. It just doesn't project really heavily. It's a, a little bit more of a, an intimate scent cloud, but I really like it a lot. It maybe doesn't do quite enough for some people to set it apart from other fragrances. And it does carry the Tom Ford price tag, though thankfully not as high as the private blend. But I think, you know, middle-aged guys and older, that is such a great choice in so many different situations. Next up is Givenchy, Zarius Rouge. Probably one thing that didn't help this out so much 
name because I would imagine the vast majority of Americans look at that and go, Xerius. I don't know how to say it. Rouge. Uh, yeah, that probably it probably doesn't help so much. This one's got pimento, orange, cacti, sandalwood, and cedar are some of the notes in the scent. This one, when you first spray it on, it does have this, this spicy, almost slightly syrup sweetness. It's actually really appealing. I know when you look at the bottle, you probably think, oh man, that looks ancient. That is gonna be crap. There's a lot of people do that. They write something off as soon as they see it and they go, nope, and that's gonna smell like it's from the 30s. Really love that one in the opening, that orange pimento kind of mixing together, really interesting. Like I said, it's quite sweet as well. Dries down, get some nice woods in there in the base. It's uh, another fragrance with a bit of class to it. Doesn't cost too much from discounters, at least if memory serves me correctly. Could be completely wrong there. But from that house nowadays, it's basically gentlemen. <laughs> gentlemen, 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 gentlemen. One red bottle to another Ferrari man in red. Now this one I know is cheap, doesn't cost very much. And when you smell it, I mean, you can kind of tell it does not smell as refined as most of these other scents here. That's putting it lightly. It's got red apple, plum, cedar, and tonka, some of the notes in the scent. And this one is syrupy sweet in that kind of synthetic way. And yet, really appealing. Now you might think that it's going to be complete and utter trash. And if you're somebody that looks for typically the much more expensive, finer things in life, then maybe it wouldn't work for you. But if you're a younger guy, or maybe somebody in their middle age, who's looking for something that's got this very appealing, attention grabbing sweetness to it that lingers for quite a while, you should check it out. And off my skin, the performance is actually really good. It does again kind of stand out like a redheaded stepchild because i mean look at this bottle i kind of ugly got that big honking atomizer up on the top and it doesn't match any of the other nicer ferrari fragrances we'll call them all the ferrari fragrances people would usually talk about and the really nicely done glass bottles with the heavy metal cap and the nice atomizer you know just fantastic bangs for your buck this one it kind of looks out of place. And now we are finally at the last one for this list. It's from Paco Rabanne and it is Black Excess. Praline, cinnamon, rosewood, and lemon are some of the notes in this scent. Now this one just kind of got swallowed up by a lot of the other fragrances that Paco Rabanne put out there over the years. When it first came out, it was pretty well received. A lot of people were wearing it. A lot of people were buying it, talking about it. You know, it's a good attention grabber, very sweet, great clubbing fragrance. Of course, the issue with that is that Paco Rabanne came out with 1 million, which is one of the biggest clubbing fragrances of all time. So when Black XS, to an extent, is kind of occupying that same niche, I mean, that's really what a lot of people peg this as scent-wise, even though it does, of course, have more versatility than that, just like 1 million does as well. But when a lot of people peg it as that, and then you have the biggest one of all time, or one of the biggest of all time in the same uh, house that's newer, didn't work out so well. Suddenly Black XS is not as cool, 1 million is more cool. Now Black XS, to its credit, still exists. Uh, it's in a new bottle style, but still exists. And there were a lot of flankers, limited editions, that came out of Black Excess. So it's not like Paco Rabanne just said, oh yeah, Black Excess, bleh, you know, discontinued. But there's no doubt that, you know, it came out and it was up here somewhere. And then 1 million came out and went whoop. And as 1 million did this, Black Excess went Near. Personally, I love the smell of Black Excess. Yeah, it's really sweet, but that praline in there is really nice. One of the first fragrances that pops into my mind uh, that used praline. I'm not saying it was the first or anything like that, but one of the first big ones that really caught my attention that had praline. And it still works today. That one people still really enjoy. Just nobody really gives it the time of day. You know, nowadays it's Eros or whatever the, the new the new hotness is. So there we go, 10 lesser known fragrances from big houses, from great brands you should know about. Guarantee you at least one of these would work really well for you. Doesn't matter if you're older, younger, middle-aged, looking for something for daytime use, nighttime use, one of these 
pull that off really well. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. Thanks for hanging with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.